Well, hello, Year 13s, or in this case, just wink it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't have more of my 13s here live. It doesn't really matter. Sorry, I'm just putting away my... Okay, 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 okay. I'm just trying to sort everything out. Oh, hi, Donna. I'm glad you're here. Got two people watching. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to pop out the chat so I don't have to have the YouTube thing. Oh, hi, Emma. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's nice to see that you guys are here. Uh, is my sound working? Everything okay? No, I haven't done a webinar in a while. Just want to do a quick check that my sound's all working. Give me a shout on the uh, uh, on the chat for the YouTube if my sound's working and everything's okay. <clears throat> I'm glad that you guys are here because, um, as I said, it's not really a massive requirement for you guys to be here live, but it does mean that you can ask questions if you want to. Um, I will. I'm going to do your paper uh, as if I'm. Yeah, fab. Uh, thank, thanks, Donna. I'm going to do your paper as if I'm sitting it. And then we will look at the mark scheme and check my answers. I think it's, it's just as much value for me to do your paper as it is for you guys to do it. As a teacher, it's worthwhile keeping uh, up to date with doing questions. So it has got value for me. So what I'll do is, uh, now wink it, you know you're on timestamp duty. Uh, so do your best to try and keep up. <laughs> I'll try and explain the questions. What I'll do is I don't want to make this too too long so what i will do is i will um i'll explain the questions that i feel like need a bit more explanation um if there's a question i deem which is like ridiculously easy that you guys just use as like it's a knowledge recall uh, i'll add an explanation if i feel like uh, there's there's value in it uh, and then if you guys want me to add any more detail to that explanation please ask on the chat i feel like that that's the best way for me to do this because i don't want it to run too long so I'll share my screen. Hi, Tenzi, thanks for coming. I'll share my screen with you guys. I'm gonna flip my camera because my clip cam is all up and running. Yeah, woo, there. Okay, so my clip cam is here. So I'll leave it like that so you guys can see me. Hi, Meter. Meter, this is an A2 paper. Uh, also, I think you're mad that you're awake. I think it should be like, I don't know, eight in, I don't know, three in the morning or something for you? I don't know. Uh, but this is an A2 paper. You're free to um, to stay around and watch if you like, Mita. Um, uh, if you want, um, uh, Mita, I will make any connections to GCSE if you want me to. Happy to do that. Mita, I did get your message to ask me to do the 2020 paper. I will do that one as my next GCSE paper. I'll do that as soon as I can. Uh, this week, I might, if I manage, I might do the paper six today, year uh, 13s, uh, in one go, get them done today if I can. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if that, that's going to be a thing. Uh, but Mita, I, I'll try and make any reference to GCSE if there is any. Okay, right, guys, let's crack on. So I've set up your paper. It's all there. My pen's charged. I'll flip my laptop into tablet mode. There we go. Okay, we're all up and running. So this is A2 paper, right? So this is a split paper for anyone who uh, is, who anyone who watches this. So we ran a, a mixed mock paper for our year 13s. We didn't have enough time in the, in the exam timetable for the year 13s to sit both a paper four and a paper five. So we created a split paper. So it's actually quite interesting. We get to see a bit of both, both units being done. Okay. So question number one says, bromine oxidizes methanoic acid to carboxylic acid, and, oh, sorry, to carbon dioxide, and the equation is here. Which of the following methods would not, I hate the not questions, which of these would not, I'll do this in red, by the way, so I can mark in green, or maybe I should do green and mark in red, I'll do that. Uh, which of the following methods would not be a suitable process for measuring this? So the first thing is, Colorimetry is the measure of color. This would be appropriate because we've got orange bromine water going to a colorless solution. That is appropriate. Measuring its electrical conductivity. Mm, that's an interesting one. So uh, technically, technically, no, it's going to be a difficult one, but it is going to become more acidic. But that's not really appropriate because it's going to start off acidic as well. So I'm not a particular fan of that one, but it's a question mark. Quenching with with uh, quenching and titrating with an acid. 
So that's uh, titrating with an acid. Quenching and titrating with an acid. With quench and then titrate. Well, you'd be quenching it to neutralize the acid. And then what, why would you be titrating then with an acid? That seems a bit odd. That That's very strange. You'd be adding, there's no base to titrate here. And the carbon dioxide is going to dissolve in the water to make it acidic. I, I'm going to go for C on this one. Seems a very odd thing to do that. Measuring the volume of gas, that definitely would be. So the, the electrical conductivity could be done. Uh, it's going to become more electrically conductive because we're gaining more ions in the solution. We'd say that the electrical conductivity of methanoic acid is going to be relatively low at the beginning, and it's going to become much more electrical conductive. So B would be a thing. So I'm going to go for C on that one. Very interesting, though, on question one. Quite challenging. Uh, but colorimetry and gas volumes are definitely going to be there. So it was between B and C, but I'm going to go for, for C on that one. Quenching and titrating with an acid is not being suitable. Okay, next one. Uh, question number two is about that's a nice standard rate equation. So we've kept this guy the same, but we have doubled Z. That one has gone up. So I'm going to divide, divide the bigger by the smaller on my calculator. Three point, calculator one, 3.2 exponential minus two divided by eight exponential minus three is four. So that's gone up by a multiple of four. That's gone up by a multiple of two. So Z is going to be second order. So it now gives me either B or D. The next thing is find where Z has been kept. So Z, what, sorry, Z has been kept the same here. Y has been a halved divided by two, and it has had no effect on the rate. So, so Z would be zero order. So the answer is going to be B. <clears throat> Fairly standard for rates that for A2. Next, uh, oh, the inorganic anti-cancer just says platinum hydrolyzed by water. Okay. The hydrolysis is first order. The half-life can be found from the graph of this platinum. Okay. So it's told us it's first order. Yeah. So if it's first order and we're looking for its half-life, we just it actually just says what is the half-life of the reaction. Well, we started with a concentration of 20. We want to end at a half the concentration, so I'm going to go down to 10. Read off the graph, hit that point there, bring that all the way down, using a ruler, by the way, in my exam. I'm trying to stick to the line as best I can. So the answer there is that number. This is 4 to 600, so that's 500. This is three squares in, so that's about 460, give or take. And it is an option, so I'm going to go for B. So, so far, three questions, relatively straight. The first one was the most challenging, I feel, definitely. I'm, I'm curious about question one. Uh, question two, relatively straightforward, because they've given us no difficulty in the numbers. Uh, number three, relatively straightforward, measuring the half-life. Okay, the next one. The following equation is uh, hydrolysis of a bromoalkane. The rate equation, okay, so it's telling us that it's first order with respect to that and zero order with respect to OH minus. What that means is it's going to be going through. If that's having no impact, then it's going to be um, it, it's going to be going through an SN, ooh, it's going to be going through an SN1 reaction, which is most likely done by a tertiary haloalkane. So it's going to be bromine, no, 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 D. It's the only tertiary there because that's a propane and it's got a two bromo and a two methyl. So that's your only tertiary. The one bromo, the C is the only one of interest that, that there. So that, of course, is going to be a primary. So that's still going to go through an SN2 reaction, in which case that would be first order as well. So it's not going to be C. So it's going to be D in this case because it's a tertiary haloalkane. Nice question that. It's checking to see if you know your SN1 versus your SN2 from um, nuclear phyllic substitution in A2. That is not an AS question. Interesting, great question. Like that one a lot. Next one. Oh, chemical tests and organics. Which of the following method could be used to distinguish a pair of organic compounds with no further tests? Okay. Which test could be used to distinguish? So that there is a tertiary, uh, I'll make it easy for myself. That's a tertiary alcohol. And this is a ketone. So Benedict's or Failing's solution of A, well, Benedict's wouldn't work for the tertiary alcohol and it wouldn't work with that either because uh, ketones resist oxidation. So A, A is definitely not the right answer. 
uh, acidified potassium dichromate wouldn't be used either. Oh, hang on a minute. With oh yeah, so yeah, yeah so it can't be B either because it's going to resist oxidation. The next one is two four dinitro two four DMPH, and that will detect the ketone, but won't detect the tertiary alcohol. The answer is going to be C. A few drops of water by addition. That's weird. Uh, water would dissolve the alcohol because it's going to form hydrogen bonding and it's relatively short. Uh, and the ketone wouldn't be salt. Oh, that does form hydrogen bonding and it is short. That would be soluble in water as well. Um, it, it's yeah, the, 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 both with four carbons. So they both dissolve in water. So D can't be used either. So the answer is definitely C. Like that one too. That's quite clever. That if the ketone was longer, it wouldn't dissolve in the water. Uh, but then, of course, you'd have to elongate the, the alcohol as well, in which case that would become less soluble as well. Clever question, though, like that. Which test uh, would distinguish between uh, 2-methylpropan-2-ol and butan-1-ol? So this is a tertiary-ol. I should just do a three with a circle. And this is a primary-ol. Uh, well, your uh, tolerance or failings. Uh Tolerance or failings would struggle to oxidize even the primary alcohol. The acidified potassium dichromate definitely will. It's going to be B. 2,4-DMPH. Uh, um, that's quite interesting, that one, because the 2,4-DMPH would actually oxidize the butan one ol into the aldehyde and probably set off a reaction, whereas the tertiary alcohol wouldn't do that. That's interesting. Oof. I feel like C could be an answer there. Few drops of water, nah, they'll both dissolve. Even though the butan, they're both they'll both solve, so D's not gonna work. Uh, the acidified potassium dichromate is gonna be a winner there. Um, it's tertiary, they're just wanting you to know if they recognize, but C could be a response. I quite like the C. Um, I'm gonna stick with B though. It's I think it's the better of the two tests. Which test could not be used to distinguish between a tertiary alcohol a tertiary ol and the aldehyde. Okay, so the tolerance or, tolerance or failings would, A would be able to separate them because we know that that there is the test, failings is the test for an aldehyde or ketone, so that one will work. The acidified definitely, that the acidified potassium dichromate will as well. 2,4-DMPH. Um, 2,4-DMPH could because it'll detect the aldehyde group but not the alcohol. A few drops of water um a short aldehyde will dissolve in the tertiary so d that's strange interesting question uh cbd mm, i like that question it's challenging it's good i'll go for d though seems like the most reasonable considering the others do that's quite nice that it's actually a lovely question like it which of these molecules can rotate the plane of polarized light so we need a, a carbon with four different groups so we're gonna, I'm going to translate each of these into an image. So the top one is two H's plus the OIC and the, so no, that one won't. That one won't do it because of the two H's. It eliminates it. This one here, that carbon, uh, very interesting. Ooh. There's your OIC and then your alcohol on the end, the OH and then, so all of it, nope, that one can't either. Ech. Uh, Cl, comma to the carbon, comma to two H's, comma to a carbon, comma to a branch, and the Cl, it's interesting, plus the O. So that one is definitely going to be optically active. So C is an answer. And then this one, that carbon has two branches on it, plus the Q, and you're, so that one doesn't either. So the answer is C. Uh, it takes a bit of time, that. It's be interesting to know how much time Damn. <laughs> uh, meter, that's an interesting response. This is the A2 meter. This is as hard as it gets. And this takes a lot of time. You know, this this is a this is difficult chemistry. It's a good nice for you to get a bit of an insight into what A2 looks like. Uh, just watching this makes my head hurt. Oh, meter. It's not as bad as it looks. This is after two more years of studying advanced chemistry. You know, and this is right at the end of their course now. So you know, it, it's not as bad as it looks. It's It really isn't, I promise. You wait till you get to the calculations. Uh -huh. Anyway, question number seven. Uh, which diagram shows the mechanism for the second order reaction 
between one potassium hydroxide, um, second order. So this is rate equals K, and this is a nuke sub, and it needs to be second order. What that means is I need the OH minus to be in here as a, as a reactant, and the haloalkane. So this is going to be an SN2 reaction. The first diagram, this one here is SN1. This is SN1. The reason being is the decomposition of that uh, then produces a carbocation for that. So this reaction here, this is the fast step. So this won't be included in the rate determining step. So that's SN, so no, uh, diagram one's out the window. Diagram two, that, that's just, just wrong because the arrow is going in the wrong direction. So two, diagram two is out the window. Uh, diagram three, that is an SN2. This is an SN2. Both species will be needed in the rate determining step. Uh, diagram four, the arrow is going in the wrong direction. So number three is the correct response. Facts. <laughs> I don't quite understand what, oh. Uh, is it bad? Uh, is it as bad as you think it is? Oh, Emma, that's so mean. It is as bad as you think it is. Oh, that's so mean as you think it is, love. No, Emma, that's not true. Emma, you're good at this. Oh, be nice to meet her. Uh, I'm really hoping she's going to take A level. I hope she will. Okay. Oh, and that brings us to the end of multiple choice. Okay. Um, right. So at this point, I'd like to check the mark scheme, really. <laughs> um, let's check the mark scheme at this point. I'd quite like, I see the value in marking this straight away. Uh, so let's have a look at the mark scheme for unit four. Five. I just want to check my multiple choice at this point. I will split my screen in a half. I'll split my screen in half if it'll let me. And then that one. Uh, I think that has, I'd, I'd quite like to mark my multiple choice straight away at this point. So red, uh, question number one is C. Oh, okay. I'm glad about that. Quenching with acid was stupid. B and then B and then D. Yes, D for four. Question number five, I went for C. I'm good. Uh, B and then D. Okay, I'm good with my chemical tests. I'm happy with that answer. Then is C, optical isomerism. No, but still, no, no, but still take it. Oh, organic chemist so fun. Oh, thanks, Emma. Thanks. Uh, next, number seven. Well, that I thought question seven was C. Yeah, that one's pretty straightforward. Oh, okay. Whew, thought I got the wrong now. Uh, diagram three was the correct one, which was which was C. Okay, cool. Uh, right. At this point, I'm going to go back because it's now into my long answer. Okay. So, oh god, calculations. Got my calculator on standby, got my laptop being cool. <laughs> okay, so calculate the question states. Calculate the total entropy change for this reaction. Include a sign and units for your answers. Should be given to the appropriate five marks. Okay, so what I'm immediately going to do is if I want the total, and they've given me delta S in terms of the reaction. So step number one, delta S system equals... Sum of, this is going to be worth one mark, sum of delta S and its super products minus sum of delta S reactants. We just remember this is super. Yeah, but then you have to translate it out to get that mark. Right, now I just need to input my data. So my products, let's divide this in half. My products are these guys. So there's my lip. So then I'm going to have um plus 239.7, and there's only one of them in the equation, that's nice, plus um, plus methane, just one of those, I'm going to get rid of the bracket, don't really need, that. I'll, I'll, I'll do it as a bracket, plus, uh, plus, okay, I see why I've done the bracket now, plus, plus 186, I know you mathematicians hate me for this, so I'll work out that total first for the products, so uh, plus 239, no, calculate one, plus 239.7, plus brackets, plus 186.2, close brackets. So I get a total for this guy as plus 425.9. I'm now going to do, so that's my products done. So it's just nice for me to color code this. There's my products. Now I'm going to do my reactants. 
So my reactants are a bit more tricky. So I'm going to do this as minus brackets. Uh, I'll do this in orange so you can see what I'm doing. So this is now one silicon carbide. Ooh, that's weird. Plus 16.5. Wait, I'm going to add that to HCl, but there's four of them in the equation. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. Mr. Duncan, should I do timestamps for the questions or sub-questions? That's a great question, Winkit. I'd probably say just, I don't think the, how long did it take me to do the multiple choice? Um, it's only taken me like maybe 10 minutes. To, I'd probably say just leave the multiple choice as a single unit. It's probably what I'd do, Winkit. Uh, 4HCl, so brackets, mm, plus 186.8 times 4, close brackets. Right, I'm going to work out that one separate. So plus 16.5 plus brackets plus 186.8 times 4, close brackets, S to D. That gives me, my, that gives me, I'll put that, change my color for that, minus and the total for this, which is plus 763.7. Right, run that through my calculator with all these brackets in it. So the total for the system plus uh, so I'm going to do brackets plus 425.9, close brackets, minus open brackets, plus 763.7, close brackets. And I get a value, my final value is minus 337.8. And that's going to be in joules per Kelvin per mole. Joules per Kelvin per mole per Kelvin. Don't forget my U. I'm easy to make a mistake on that. Um, thanks for coming, Ben. Glad you're here. So that's entropy of the cis entropy change for the system. Now I need to do entropy change for the surroundings. I'll do this in red as well. Delta S surroundings equals minus delta H over T. Right. So where's the entropy change? That was in the question. That's up there. So I've got minus brackets minus. That's a clever trick, isn't it? It's going to make it positive. 31.3. Now, the problem is this is going to spit me out in kilojoules. So I need to make sure this is tricky, this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to keep, since I'm working out the total entropy, and entropy is kilojoules, um, I'm going to convert everything to joules. It's just easier if I do it that way. So I'm going to multiply that by 1,000. So um, get rid of my decimal place, which is just going to be... Three zero zero, I believe. I'm, I kid you not. I'm actually doing three one six three one point three times a thousand. I kid you not on my calculator. Just to check, all divided by the temperature, which was two nine eight in the question, two nine eight Kelvin. Right, run that through my calculator. Minus brackets minus six three one three zero zero close brackets divided by two nine eight gives me an answer of. So my entropy of the system is plus 2,118.5 joules per Kelvin per mole. It's still an entropy. Oh, hang on a minute. It's not, is it? Because the this is, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot on. Because the entropy change units was kilojoules per mole, which I changed then to joules per mole. And then I've got temperature at the bottom, which you bring up, which means joules per Kelvin per mole. It's, it's correct. Right, now I can work out entropy total. I know that I've run out of space. It's because I'm writing this on my tablet rather than on a piece of paper because all my writing would have been smaller. Delta S total is equal to the sum of delta S surroundings plus delta S, to delta S system. So just add the two values together. So I'm going to get delta S of the surroundings is plus 2118.5. Got it on my calculator with the real one. Plus, I'm going to put it in brackets, put everything in brackets, minus 337.8, close brackets. So I've got that volume of calculator. I'm going to now go answer plus brackets minus 337.8, close brackets, equals. So the total, this entropy change, the entropy total change is equal to plus 1,780.7. And now I need to give my units. I've added them all together. Joules per Kelvin per mole. And I'm done. Oh, what up? Sup, Ivan? Nice to see you, dude. So that's my total entropy change there. 
Okay. So in industry, the reaction is carried out at 700 degrees Celsius by considering entropy and other relevant factors justify the use of temperature. Well, we started with a temperature of 298. So I think it's reasonable in industry, you always do this. Bullet point number one, which I will do in red. So higher temperature, higher, I'm gonna do temp just to make my life easier. I know that you wouldn't, I'll ask you like higher as well. Higher temp means higher rate because that's why they're increasing the temperature really guys. Yeah, that's why they're doing it. They're increasing the rate of the reaction. So in the exam, I'd write higher temperature means higher rate of reaction. That's probably going to be one mark. Now we need to consider entropy. I hate this bit. Right. Now, the only one that the only part of entropy that factors in the temperature of the surroundings is the entropy. Uh, sorry, of entropy is the entropy of surroundings. It has temperature in it. So if I increased this number, if I increased this 298, yeah, if I increased that to 700, I'm dividing this massive number by a bigger number. What will happen is that means that this entropy value for the surroundings will be smaller. So I'm going to make a note of that. So delta, oh, shouldn't do green because that's my marking. So delta S surroundings will be, will be reduced will be reduced or smaller, yet lower value, less positive, will be reduced, brackets, less positive. I know I wouldn't write that in my exam. I'd write it properly. Delta will be reduced, less positive with higher temperature. I think that's fine with higher temp. Now, so far, we've got two out of the three marks. Now, we always need to refer back to the entropy total here. Now, if that value was reduced then the entropy total would also be reduced since it's a plus value. So I'm then going to write down delta S total will also, also be reduced. Now, if you reduce entropy total, then what that means is you're making it less feasible. The greater the value of S total, if S total is positive, we're feasible. So this is feasible, this is very feasible, and we're gonna make that spot, so it's gonna be less feasible, you're gonna get a lower yield. Yeah, it will be reduced, so less feasible, less feasible, so lower yields. That's what I'm going for. It's gonna be fascinating to mark this question when I'm done. Use your answer to calculate the equilibrium constant at 298. Right, equilibrium constant, so this is shrink. So we've got delta S total equals R L N K. I know, I know I teach this as shrink. It's really stupid. I should just say shrink, but I just remember it being because it looks a bit like the word shrink. To me, it looked like shrink. So that it's just a stupid way of remembering, but then everybody's like, why is there an H in there? You can do whatever you like to remember this, guys. But that there is the equation. They want us to calculate K, that's the rate constant. So we're gonna rearrange, well, that's relatively easy, just divide everything by R, sorry, yeah. divide everything by R. So that if I do that, I now, and I shouldn't do that, I like the original equation. So, delta S total divided by R will give me ln K. So I'm gonna have to anti ln it, which is E to the, um, e, e. <laughs> anyway, so now I can run that calculation. Should be doing this in red, really. So I'm going to add in my delta S total, which was plus 1780.7. So plus 1780.7 over 8.31, the ideal gas constant. Or my idea, 8.314. So what number is that going to give me? So plus 1780.7. 0.7 divided by 8.31 equals, and I get an answer of 214.3, and that equals LMK. Now I need K. So what I need to do is I need to E both of this, not E, it's just E. It, on my calculator, for those people, the LM button is in white. I really ought to check to see if you can actually see this. 
Uh, let's see if I can find this now. Yeah, on my calculator, the LN button is there. That's a little LN. There you go. And above the LN is the letter E. Let's see if I can get it closer. Above it is the letter E. You can't focus on it, can it? Is the letter E. So I'm just going to use the anti the anti of that. The sh I'm going to shift it. So if I now do shift LN, yeah, which is E to the power, yeah, and I'm going to do E to the power 214.3. So shift LN 214.3 equals. <laughs> it's massive. 1.17 times 10 to the 93. Lol, that is an enormous rate constant. Wow, this reaction is really fast. Why would they increase it? I don't like it. I don't know. The rate, the rate constant is effective. Oh, I'm not even get. I'm not even gonna get lost in what that tells me. I don't even like it. It's enormous. Okay, I have. That's. We'll. we'll I can't wait to mark it. <laughs> um. Does it, how it says. Uh. Can't find. Uh, the units for rate constant. I think the LN, the E minus gets rid of the units. Uh, rate equals K. Rate equals K. Nah. So the units of, will always have a unit, but it depends whether or not, I don't know, do I need units? Can I work out what the units would be? Reactor? Oh, I don't know. Don't really like that very much. I don't know whether or not the E gets rid of it. Uh, that, that I'm interested about. We'll keep going. Per second. Oh, you know, let's keep going. Right, next question is a Born Haber. Gotta love Born Habers. So it's given us loads of hours on the table. Complete the Born Harbor cycle by adding in the letters of the boxes. Okay, adding in the letters. Okay, okay, I see what they're doing. Do I need to and relevant species on the blank lines? And arrowheads to show the direction. Okay. So the first one, first box here, we are, so we've gone from calcium to a gas. Then we split the iodine into a gas. Right, we haven't ionized any of them. It's really interesting because there were different sizes of arrows here. So it's either going to be the, well, the electron affinity. Uh, I'm doing this in a weird way. The electron affinity, for, that, that's going to be iod, two iodines gas going to two iodides and that's going to be times two of the uh where's the the electron affinity of iodine there's that so that's two times e so e is done at least that's done yeah and that's going to make two i minuses as a gas the next thing is what was then before that so if that's the electron affinity then this must be ionization number one of calcium and that's small, so Ca plus one gas, the iodine has remained just as atoms, and ionization number one of calcium is B, so that's going to be B. Then we've got the bigger second ionization, look how much bigger that is, that makes more sense, so that's going to become Ca2 plus, oh, I've forgotten my electron, I need an electron there, easily forgotten that. Now I've got plus gas plus two electrons plus Cool, and that there is ionization, that's C. And then the next one is, did they, oh, and then on this one, I'm gonna have two, I'm gonna have calcium two plus gas plus the two iodides. Now, which one have they given me? So I've done that one, I've done that one. The enthalpy change for the atomization. Oh, they've already labeled A and D, that's stupid. And then they've given me the lattice energy and notice it's negative. What that means is that we're making bonds, it's coming down. Yeah, negative comes down, Positive goes up. Oh, I didn't label that arrow. That's an up arrow. And that's an up arrow. Oof, nearly forgot that, didn't I? Uh, and so this one's going to be F. And labeled the direction. I like it. That's neat, that. Can't looking forward to mark that one, too. That one's fun. Use the data to calculate the enthalpy change of the formation of calcium, calcium iodide. So we actually want this one, the formation of calcium iodide. Uh, enthalpy of formation. It's actually labeled on there as well. So we need to write an equation for this. This is a bit awkward with me having different pages. So the most, okay, so that's what I'm after. So I'm gonna start, here's the start. That's the start line. 
and that's the end of the arrow, so that's the end. So we need to start at the same place and end at the same place, which is there. Right, so I'm heading up this way. So this one is with me. So this is A, this is where I need to zoom out. I apologize for the zooming out, folks. Um, and I'm gonna do it in this space here just because I can. So A, so I'm gonna have with me. So, oh, by the way, question mark equals, plus is with me, with me, then the value. And the value for A is plus 178.2, close brackets. And then I've got plus, because it's with me, I'm still moving up in this direction, still with me, plus two times um, D, plus 106.8, this is taking time. Then the next one is with me, plus brackets, B, ionization of calcium, plus 590, close brackets. Next one is still with me, plus brackets. And this is now calcium two plus second ionization, plus 1145, close brackets. The next one, this is the next one, and it's still with me. I'm going with it. So it's still a with me, close brackets. But this one is two times, that's, uh, that's, that's going to be E, and that's minus, two times minus 295.4, close brackets. And then the last one is with me. So this is plus F. How fascinating. So where's F, which is down there, minus 2,074. Right, type that into my calculator exactly as it is. Plus brackets, plus 178.2, close brackets, plus brackets, two times, plus 106.8, close brackets, plus open brackets, plus 590, close brackets, plus brackets, plus 1145, close brackets, plus brackets, two times, minus 295.4, close brackets, plus brackets, minus 2074, exactly as it is on the tin. And I get minus 538, which sounds like a very, I think that is a pain. Mr. Duncan, are you planning to go through the whole paper today? Yes, I want to finish this paper. Absolutely. How much time are we in? How much time are we up to? Uh, we are up to 37 minutes. I can do this, Ivan. Give me a break. So I've calculated its value, minus 538 kilojoules per mole. Seems very reasonable to me. So there's going to be a mark for this crazy equation and a mark for the final answer. That's all it's going to be. The lattice enthalpy for calcium iodide determined experimentally by using Vaughan Harbors is significantly, lifty and significantly differs from the theoretical. Okay, what the hell? Calcium iodide, the Haber versus the PIM, the perfect ionic model. What it's saying here is that they are significantly different. So the Haber is always bigger. So we've just worked out the Haber, which is, uh, and by the way, the lattice, determining the entropy of lattice energy, that's minus 2,000 and something. What was it? The end of it, 2,074. So they're saying that this is 2,070 and the PIM is significantly different, like, I don't know, 1,700. Yeah, significantly different. That's because this has got considerable covalent going there. But then they say, explain why the board harbor of the calcium fluoride, uh, but significantly different from, what? Explain why the born the born haber the theoretical values of the atom of these are similar for calcium. Okay, so calcium fluoride, they're saying that these ones, we could even predict it, it's going to be probably bigger since the fluoride ion is smaller, therefore stronger ionic it bonds. It's going to be like a two, three hundred or something. I don't know. Two, maybe even bigger, like two, six hundred, maybe even higher than that. But they're going to be very similar. Five, nine, eight. So this is because this has some covalent character, some cove carac, and this one has almost no, almost no covalent character. All has almost no covalent character. Yeah, and the reason for that, God, for marks. Okay, and the reason for that. Calcium 2 plus is CA. Okay, bullet points, guys. Where are the marks? First mark is this the reason why they're different? The reason why those are different CA, CAI2 has some covalent character. One mark. CAF2 has almost no covalent character. So I'm going to write down those sentences just as they are, get two marks. Now I need to explain why. 
Next bullet point, calcium two plus is, has, has a high charge density. High charge density. So it is very polarizing. So very polarizing. Yeah, it, it's distorting, very polarizing. It's distorting the iodide ion. Now the iodide ion, iodide is very large, very large and is easily polarized. Hell, I can polarize iodide. I mean, it's so she's so fat. You know, you can easily distort her cloud, easy. Iodide is, a, is very large and is easily polarized. And it shows it's easily polarized, uh, so very distorted. So, very, so high distortion, so large distortion, large distortion, so shows, so CAI2 shows, CAI2 shows covalent character. Whoops, covalent character. Uh, it's F minus, however, F minus is very small, very small and hard to polarize and hard to polarize. So little distortion, so little distortion. Little distortion, almost, almost 100% ionic. Almost 100% ionic. It's gonna be interesting to mark that one as well, I like that, it's good, it's good. Next, electron affinity for iodide. Explain how the electron affinity of chlorine differs. Ooh, that's clever, because they haven't told us chlorine's electron affinity. Chlorine, iodine, electron affinity, one, electron affinity. Right, they're making a bond, hence why it is exothermic. You're making an electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the electron that's binding to it. Yep, so what that means is, so I'm gonna say bullet point number one, iodine, iodine atoms are larger, are larger than chloride ions, larger than Cl atoms not ions, atoms. Next, um, but electrostatic, elect, elect stat, electrostatic attraction, electrostatic attraction between electron and nucleus, nucleus is stronger, is stronger in Cl, in chlorine because it's closer to the nucleus, less shielding, due to less shielding, due to less shielding. I'm gonna lob that in there, definitely less shielding. So the CL electro, electron affinity, I'll actually write it, electron affinity would be more exothermic. It'd be a more negative value. So CL electron affinity, affinity is more exothermic. We, we know that. We don't know what the value is, but it's going to be. Again, another, I've done four bullet points there for three marks. Yeah, but really nice question, though. I really like it. Yeah, because that one's gaining it. That's the attraction here, but this one has less shielding, so it's close to the nucleus, stronger attraction. It's going to be interesting to see what the marks can see, but I'll lose one. I'm fascinated on that one. Next, we're into, oh, we're into acid base theory. Oh, my God. Okay, back to green, back to red. Am I marking, am I writing in red and marking in green? Yeah, I meant to be able to switch it with black there, so that. Okay, a solution of hydrochloric acid has a pH of 1.125. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions. Ooh, oh, that's pretty. Haven't seen that in a while. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna write down pH equals the minus log of the H plus concentration. So the opposite of that is log to the minus pH. I think I'm going to get one mark for this. Oh, no, it's can't say two marks. It's just the values at the end. So I now need to add some numbers in here. So 10 to the minus 1.125. Lots of people will forget the minus, by the way. So shift log brings me the 10. Minus 1.125 gives me uh, H plus concentration. H plus concentration equals 0 0.0, 0 0.74750 to 3 sig fig moles per dm cubed. Next, 
Right, but I'm not done here. That'd be usually be where it ends. But now they're asking for the hydroxides and they've given me KW. Well, at least I know I'm using KW. Go back to red. So KW equals H plus plus o H, times OH minus. Now I'm looking for the OH minus, so let's bring that down there. So I'm just going to rearrange it. I'm not going to bother keeping the original. Over the H plus, over H plus. It's quite unusual, that rearrangement. Not normal. Got Yorkshire. Don't know why. KW is given to me, although you should learn it. 1 exponential minus 14 divided by 0 0.075. So I get an OH minus constant. So, by the way, just to insert my numbers, uh, this 1 times 10 to the minus 14. This was the calculate the number I just calculated. And then that will spit out a value of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 13. Winner, moles per dm cubed. I like it. Shouldn't really switch to green. Sorry about that, folks. Shouldn't do that because I'm going to mark in green. Going to mark. So I'll leave it like that. I'm done. That's nice, that. It's clever. A bit longer than normal. Calculate the volume of water which needs to be added. C1V1. I'm doing a dilution. So back to red. Dilution. Adding water. So C1V1 equals C2V2. So... Calculate the volume of water which must be added to. So that's tricky, that, because this is going to calculate the total new volume. Uh, of this solution, to increase the pH from that to that. Oh, I love this. Because they've given us pH, which is a type of concentration. I've got to flip both of them out. So 10 to the minus 1.125 gives me 0 0.075. And then 10 to the minus 1.5 gives me shift log minus 1.5. Gives me 0 0.0316. Right, so this is moles per dm cubed. And this is the original. This is Ori, which is over here. Yeah, in orange, let's switch to blue. This is Ori. This is Ori. This is new. And this is new. So this is the Ori. This is the original. And they want to get it to this. So we've got the original volume. We can just in input my numbers. So the concentration of the original, go back to red, so 0 0.075. Oh, let's just rearrange this, please, for vol 2. So that becomes over C2. Get rid of that. So that times by 25, all over the new wanted concentration of that, it's going to spit out a total volume. So 0 0.075 multiplied by 25 divided by, no, ruined it. Okay, doesn't matter. Divided by 0 0.0316. And I get a value of 59.3. Centimeters cubed. Now I need to know the difference in volume. So 59.3 minus 25, because that's the total new volume, and that's going to be minus 25, gives me a final number of 34.3 centimeters cubed. We're done. Dun, dun, dun. Nice. Cool. Moving on. That makes sense, actually, from a marketing perspective. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'll take it. Take it. Okay, next one. Phosphoric acid dissolves in water. Oh, nice bit of acid-based conjugates. So the H3PO4 ion from fine is added to water dissociates further. Okay. So identify the acid, identify the acid base spaces linked to the acid. Okay, identify the acids and bases. Right. So here's the acid. Here's the acid. I'm not gonna just put A and B. I'm actually gonna get a bit of full words here. That's the base. Because he's given a proton over to him. Yeah. And that's therefore, look for the link. So this is now going to be, the, that's now the answer. Conjugate acid. Conjugate acid. I'm actually in my exam. I would write down conjugate acid. I'd actually write, that's not a lot of space there. And this is going to be the conjugate base. Conjugate base. Done. Okay. Identify the space linking the acid base conjugate pairs. I don't really know what that means, to be fair. Link. Link. Well, you know, we know what's which one is this. It's fine. Explain why very little dissociation occurs of the F2R. So this one occurs readily, but then this one doesn't. The reason being is this is an equilibrium. So for it to go in the other direction, yeah, it'd have to lose another H+. plus. It's already fully minus. It's going to be hard to do that anyway. But we've also made loads of that one's going to push equilibrium. But we've, The first dissociation produces these two. And that 
will push the equilibrium because this increases the constant. It's going to push it back. That's I don't. That's hard. Oh, I don't like that. Two marks. Oh, I don't. Like, so number one, uh, I'm going to say losing H plus, losing second H plus. Second H plus is more difficult. More difficult than first due to more difficult than first due to H two P O four already already negative already I'm gonna put one minus yeah so it's gonna be harder number one but then in the solutions so second one is probably gonna be H three O plus H three O plus formed formed in first equation, first re-dissociation, dissociation, dissociation, um, so pushes second equilibrium, pushes second equilibrium, second equilibrium, second equilibrium to the, can't say backwards and forwards, always left and right in equilibrium, so we're going to go, Shift it from right to left. Shift the equilibrium to the left. Ooh, I don't like it. I'll want to see that mask scheme. Next, use equation one. Write an expression for the acid dissociation constant. Use equation one. So that's nice and easy. Whew, finally get an easy one. H plus H2PO4 minus all over H3PO4. Nice and easy, thank goodness. In, oh, don't forget your square brackets. A 0.5 molar solution of phosphoric acid has a pH of 1.2. Calculate the Ka, right? This is just an, a standard acid base, standard weak acid calc. So we've got the Ka. I'm not going to waste my time writing it again. I'm just going to insert my numbers. Calculate Ka, nice. Ka equals, so H plus concentration, we're actually going to go 10 to the minus 1.2 again. We're going to have to do another flip out. Shift E, shift E to the power of 1.2. So that there gives me 0.0631, right? So that goes into there, 0.0631. And then because this is just a weak acid calc, that is the same number, 631, all over the original of 0.5. Right, uh, you can just square it if you wish. Yeah, we can do the false equation. So I've got that number on my calculator. I'll square it equals divided by 0 0.5. Okay, so I get a Ka value of 7.96 times 10 to the minus 3. Have any units? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Moles per dm cubed. It's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Assume that there's no further. Okay, so we're going to get... That's tricky that. I feel like I haven't got enough there for the mark, so I'm just going to write down Ka equals H plus squared all over all over uh, the original acid, H3PO4. Yeah, I'm just going to do that because um, they're the same. I just, I just feel like that's four marks. I mean, what the first mark's going to be that guy. And then there's one for the filled-in equation and then one for the final answer. Well, maybe the expression's needed, so I'll put that one in there anyway. My interesting thing that with four marks. Easier than the last one. Oh, that brings me to the end of section of unit four. Right. I want to mark this stuff. I really, really do. That's hard, man. Right. It's always hard, even for me, folks. It's tough. It's very tough. Everything's tough. Can't expect it not to be. Right. Uh, I want that there. That didn't work. That there, and this one over here. I realize it's going to be a long webinar. I should cut it in half. Right. So my answer, 18.7, exactly theirs. That's nice. So expression for Delta S system. It's nice to tick them off. Expression of green, mark in green. I'm going to go for our latter. There, expression value for system. From minus 337.8. Yeah, expression for surroundings, value for surroundings with its number, 
it's expression for total, value for total, correct. Five marks, nice. Next, high temperature means high, higher temperature was resulting in a less positive lower surroundings. Less positive lower surroundings with high temp. So total less is less positive, which makes reaction less feasible, reduces yield, perfect. Comment number three, but a higher temperature increases rate. I'll take all three. Next, oh, my value is not the same as theirs. Oh no. Expression, one mark. Two, four, one point, I've got point three. That's interesting. It's not the same as theirs. The calculation's the same though. That's weird. But their number's different at the outcome. Not that it matters. And they get 1.154 times 10 to the minus 10 to the So at least I've got them in the 93s. Allow answers between 1.06 and 1. Point, I'm just in the bracket. I'll take it. Whew, that's close. By the way, I think their value's wrong. Uh, oh, uh, it's the unit that is the last mark. I forgot to unit to put. Oh, no. Did I forget a unit? Where did I forget that unit? The value for delta 2 or 3SF and units. Did I forget it? I didn't. I didn't. Thank goodness. Wowza. So you need the units. That's me. And that's at Excel for you guys. Wowza. I would I would have actually marked that incorrectly if you hadn't. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. You were star. Next. Labeled values. Labeled ones. Uh, B. C. Two times E. And F. Arrows up, up. Up, up. Down, down, uh, people on the lines, yes. People on the lines, yes. One electron, yes, yes, many ticks. Uh, big long mark for the equation and minus the, yes, I'll take it. And one mark for that crazy equation. Nice one, take it. Winner. So I think I got all of those marks, folks. A lot of marks, a lot of ticks there for three marks. I haven't lost one yet, though. I'm going to lose one here. Okay, five bullet points. Four marks. So I've said CI2 has some covalent character. Bonding in calcium chloride is virtually 100% ionic. Has no covalent... <clears throat> Fine, I'll take it. Yeah. Has almost no covalent character for virtually it's fine. Whereas calcium iodide has a degree of covalency, has some covalency, some covalent character. Nice. Uh, calcium ion is polarizing, high charge density, mine's better. Fluoride ion is so small, not easily polarized. I'll take those. I've given them both as well. It's amazing. I'll take them all. Four marks. I'm going to lose one soon, though, guys. I will. I will. Uh, iodine atoms are larger than chloride ions. As the atomic radius of chlorine is small and less shielding, iodine atoms are larger than Cl atoms. Electrostatic attraction is stronger due to less shielding in Cl, Cl. Right, more exothermic. Take it. Stronger attraction. Electrostatic attraction between E minus is stronger. I'm going to take all three of those. Yeah, atomic radius. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get because I even drew a picture. Stuff it. I'm having it for the picture. Next, acid base. Two marks. Two marks back to green. Um, 0 0.75. 1 0.33 times 10 to the minus 13. Ignore significant figures except for one. That's all right. That's nice. Oh, calculate the moles. Ooh, <clears throat> that's not what I did. Calculate the change in pH. Concentration. The answer is 34.3, which is what I got. Correct answer with no working scores for. Well, I'm having all four for that. Mine's definitely right. I think there's the C1, V1. Yeah, and the second way. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give him. I've got the right answer, and it's right. I'm having all four. Don't care what you say. Got the correct answer, so it allows it, although it's not particularly great that. They want me to work out moles. Okay. One mark. 
allow any allow two correct acids or bases all correct acid base plus indication of pairing acid base acid conjugate okay oh i see what they're linking together oh that's weird never seen that before uh but i get two two marks losing second is was more difficult than the reverse already one minus an explanation that makes reference to the following points the oxonium ion, do you mean the hydronium ion? Oh, allow hydronium. Uh, is produced in first association plus, formed in first association, pushing equilibrium to the left. It's actually, I've done all that in one bullet point, didn't need the first one. I overwrote. Correct expression for Ka. Oh, allow use of H plus instead of H3O plus. Excellent. I was worried about this one. Calculate the hydronium ion concentration. Yeah, state that, okay, do I allow it for just saying squared? Oh, allow, equation, winner, take it. Ha, yes, I knew I needed that somewhere. Then correct calculation and units. Multiply. Yeah, we forgot those units too. And we're on to unit five. Right, where are we up to time-wise? Where are we up to with the time? One hour and one minute and a half through the paper. Blimey. Okay. Into paper five. It's going to be tight, this, guys. How long was the paper? Because I'm suddenly realizing, like, I should try and finish this in good time. It was only, I've only got 40 minutes to do paper five. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, I can see why even you guys found it tight. Yeah. Oh, I am marking it in between, though, guys, so... I'm making excuses for myself. I'll shut up. Right. So, electrochemical cells, the, the EMF of the cell under standard conditions. So, it's given us the voltage. It's given us the voltage. The E value for the silver electrode, which is there, is plus 0 0.80. And then it says, what is the E value for the thallium? Titanium, titanium. So, and the voltage is 2.4. So, number line. Yeah, we need the two. We need the difference between the two of these to add up to plus 2.43. So if I do, uh, well, it can't be that one. Can't be A because you can't, the, the, the highest number you can get is for fluorine and it's not that high. It's about plus 2.9 or something, so it can't be A. Can't go that negative either. So it's either A or B. And the only way you can get that is if you have plus 0 0.8 going down to minus 1.63, 1.63, it's C. Next. Give the electron configuration of the element vanadium. Kind of the periodic table. Vanadium. Vanadium. There's vanadium. So it's going to end 4s2, 3d3. 4s2, argon. 4s2, 3d3. D. Because it's the element. It's not an ion. It's the element. Yeah, fine. We run. Uh, transition metals typically form a number of ions which are stable in aqueous solution. The best explanation for this property is the difference in successive ionization is just similar to the differences in hydration entropies of the ions. That is correct. So I'll, I'll take that. That is right. All the ions are formed by the removal of electrons from the D. That's complete garbage. No, because we removed the first electrons removed from them from the uh, from the 4S. So that's garbage. The ionization energy of the transition metals are low. That's not true either. They're actually pretty high. It's just their hydrations are high too. The hydration enthalpies of the transition ions are always more exothermic than the ions of S and P D block metals. Why are they talking about S and P D block? I don't know why they bother. If it said S and P dot ionizations, I'd give them it. But that's kind of the first one. So I'm going to go for A. Transition metal complexes are formed when ethane dioate and ethanoate ions are used separately in aqueous solutions. So this is a bidentate ligand, biden, and this is a monoden, monodentate. The complexes formed by the di bidentate are more stable than the mono. Explain, it's gonna be the, um, it's called the chelate effect. It's due to an increase in entropy. Ethane, uh, ethane dioate ligands form stronger bonds with the, nope, that's not true. The formation of ethane increases the number of particles in the solution, that is true. The uh, ethane, uh, ethane dioic acid is a strong acid, nothing to do with it. Is a weaker, nothing to do with it. The answer is B. 
Ammonia, butyl, uh, increasing pH, right? Ammonia, pH 11. Butyl amine is a primary amine, so that's pH 12. Phenyl amine is low, about pH, I don't know, 7.8 or something. It's low. It's not a good, it's not a good in terms of pH wise. So in increasing order of pH, so it's either C or D, because phenyl is going to be the lowest, and the highest is going to be the butyl. I'm going to go for C, but I can't wait to see the mark scheme for that one. Next one, the reaction with benzene, oh, a reaction of benzene produces benzene sulfonic acid. The reaction is, is done, carried out using fuming sulfuric acid. Just got to know that one. Sorry, guys. Which one is not a bidentate ligand? A, it's a tridentate. That one is, the oxalate ion definitely is. Yeah, that one can be as well. A, it's tridentate. Weird. Next, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm adding an acetyl group. This is Friedelcraft acetylation. So that had a C on it before. That was a CL on there before. So aluminium uh, chloride is going to be my catalyst. It's C. It's not ethanol. It has to be the acyl chloride. You need a, and a chlorine remover, which is ALCL3. Next, uh, phenol reacts with ethanol and chloride to form phenol ethanoate. It's forming an ester. In an experiment, 3.67 grams of phenyl ethanoate was formed, giving a yield of 85%. What was the starting mass of phenyl? Of phenol. Okay, so we got 3.67 grams of that. Right, so that was 85%. So I'm going to divide that by 85. Whoops. Divide it by 85, calculator. 3.67 divided by 85 will give me 1%. Yep, yeah, 0.043. Two, but I'm going to keep that on my calculator. Now I'm going to times it by 100. Yeah, and I'm going to times that by 100. So I was expecting to get, I should have got 4.31 grams, 4.32 grams, lol. That's what I should have got. Right, now what I need to do is I now need to get to moles. Uh, they've given me the MR of the ethanoate. Grams over rams over 136 will give me moles. Divide that by 136 gives me S to D. 0.0317 moles. Now I can use the equation. So the equation is a one-to-one. -one. So how much phenol was being used? 0.0317 moles. Right. And phenol weighs 94. Times it by 94. Times that by 94. <coughs> 2.98 grams. C. Moving on. <coughs> what is the coordination number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's either C or D. And the overall charge, nickel is overall charge, nickel is always plus two. But that's a minus one, that's a minus one. These are oxalate ions, they're both minus two. So minus two and minus two. Total in chart minus six. It's minus four in total. Because the nickel's plus two, and then I've got minus six in total, minus four. I'm gonna go for D. It's very unusual. It's a rather negative complex, but okay. Uh, and we're into long answers. Want to mark the multiple choice? That was fun. I feel like that was quick. Was that quicker than unit four? Don't know. Uh, right. Question number one. I felt like that was a quicker multiple choice than the unit one. So answers green. Oh, this is where I need to shrink this down. Sorry, guys. There we go. Move that to there. C. D, A, B, C, oh, worried about that one, C, A, tridente, C, 2.98 grams, winner, D, no, C, 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 oh, uh, okay, I'm, I'm that, that I'm surprised at. It's because there's not enough of them. I always get a multiple choice wrong somewhere. Right, let's continue. We're doing well here, folks. We're more than halfway through the paper, and I'm at a time of one hour and ten. We're doing okay. Doing okay. I bet everyone's bailed on me. I bet there's no one watching. And I bet Winkit, you're still there with me, dude. Right, I'm answering in red, marking in green. Describe the changes. They've given a, a mechanism which is utter garbage. 
what's going on with that? So that what I would do in this question is I'd draw it. St change number one, well, that's just garbage. We should be leaving from the ring and going to the NO2, and the plus should be on the end, not on the O. It's complete garbage. Yep, so arrow should be going arrow from arrow leaving. I get the marks on the diagram. Arrow leaving from ring, from BZ ring. Yeah. Change number two, that curly arrow is garbage. Should be break. The, 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 oh, the, that's broken badly too, of course. Thanks, Wing Kit, you allege. The horseshoe's wrong. The horseshoe should be facing it. So this one I would draw out again. Can't get it wrong then. They'd, they'd give me the mark just for doing this. It just happens to say the word describe, so I'm describing it. Uh, horseshoe. Horseshoe should face, should face carbon with NO2 attached. And the last thing is the curly arrow for the hydrogen's garbage as well. But I'd always draw it out if I can. The curly arrow for that hydrogen should be leaving from the bond, not the hydrogen. Yeah. Curly arrow should be leaving carbon H bond, C H bond, middle. Done. Be interesting to mark what they ask you on their words. That's an, that's an absolute mess. Give the reagents for step number two. What's step number two? Nitro benzene to phenylamine, tin and HCl. Just gotta know it. Tin, give the reagents. I'm gonna put it in words. Tin and HCl. I'll do. Phenylamine is a base. Explain why phenylamine is a weaker base than ammonia. Bullet point number one. The lone pair of electrons. The lone pair of electrons of electrons on nitrogen are incorporated, are incorporated into BZ benzene's D localized probably a mark three marks delocalized into benzene's delocalized ring of electrons of electrons they are no longer no so therefore therefore less available therefore less available less available less available uh, to accept a proton They've given such a lot of space there. I don't know if I'm going to get all three there. State what is seen when a few drops of aqueous solution of phenylamine are added to an aqueous solution of copper 2+. plus. You're going to see a pale blue precipitate. I'm going to form a blue precipitate. Blue PPT. Just to explain to you why. So that's actually quite clever. You're not going to form a lot of it. It's going to be a... It's going to be, you're going to see it, but it won't... It won't be a massive one. The reason being is that's really clever because we know that the phenylamine can act as a base. It's a bad base. That's a trap, that. Oh, do I want to change my mind? It is a base. It's still a pH of about 7.8. God, do you know what? I'm cheating if I do it. What's the pH of phenylamine? I don't know. Phenylamine. Phenylamine. pH. I would say 7.8. Oh, that's melting point. What are you doing? Phenylamine has a pH of about 9. That's higher than a Thor. So it's definitely a base. Why? It's higher than a Thor. I need to remember that. So it is going to definitely form a blue precipitate. I feel like I've just cheated there. My bad. It's just going to remove the H plus and form. If you, by the way, two marks, if it had been two marks, the copper two plus was the hexa. Yeah, was the hexa aqua iron. And the phenylamine, which I'll just write as, I don't know, PA. Phenylamine is going to rip off the proton and it's just going to form my hydric complex. The Tetra aqua dihydroxy 2 complex, which is a pale blue precipitate. 
Give them the agents and conditions for step number one. Azo dye, <clears throat> sodium nitrite, ah, not nitrate, nitrite, and, oh, what was it, Mr. Lincoln? And HCl. Yeah, it's, it's the CL there. It's a nice reminder. To juice the structure of the organic compound needed to make it azoviolet. So they've taken this thing, and that's that thing there, and they've reacted it with their own. It's not, you know, 1,3-dihydroxybenzene, or what I'd probably prefer, 2-hydroxyphenol. 2-hydroxy, I should be doing it in red. 2-hydroxyphenol. There we go. Next, give a reason why azo-violet exists as geometrical isomerism. The double bond, the nitrogen, oh. <clears throat> yeah, HL and fat. Oh, I lost my first mark. Emma, why did you tell me? <clears throat> I lost my first mark, folks. There it is. I told you I never get them all. Five degrees Celsius. I lost it. First mark, Mr. Duncan loses. Fine. So close. I would have loved 100%. Um, why does it so nitrogen, nitrogen double bond cannot rotate? Cannot rotate. So therefore, it's going to show rotate. Done. Oh, uh, this is nice. I like these ones. Cool. Just gonna draw the mirror image. The exact mirror image. Exact mirror image. Yeah. That's what I'd do. Exact mirror image. Move on. Chromium is a transition metal with many typical properties of these elements. State the meaning of the term transition metal. A, an, an element, go back to red, an element, an element who can form, an element, I shouldn't say who, an element that can form stable ions, stable ions with an incomplete with an incomplete D subshell. Incomplete D subshell. Chromium and copper have the same outermost electronic configuration. Give the outermost configuration of this. Outermost. Chrom chromium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d. Oh no, chromium. Promotion. 4s1, 3d5, outermost. It's 4s1. <laughs> That's clever, man. It's game. Because the copper does the 4s1 as well. Instead of then it's 3d9. That's clever, that. And it is the outermost. It's the furthest out. Use your knowledge of the oxidation states of chromium to predict a formula of two chromium oxides. Well, we know that there's chromium-2, which is blue, and chromium-3, which is green. So now we can just give the ions, give the oxides, give the formula. CrO and Cr2O3. Green precipitates can be formed with the addition of small volumes of sodium hydroxide, separate solutions of chromium-3, iron-2, and nickel-2. Plus, I hate nickel. Explain why, explain how separate samples of these precipitates can be distinguished. Right. So what they've said there is that they have made green precipitates of all three. Blech. Green solid, green gelatinous solid, green gelatinous solid. Yeah. So they're saying, how could we prove them apart? So what I'd do is bullet point number one. And let's do, this is chromium three plus green gelatinous precipitate. This is iron two. What we can do is we can actually give the re oh, I'd, if you want me to give the re nickel two plus 
I sh but with the precipitate, by the way, which is CR brackets H2O3 brackets OH3, because it's a neutral precipitate. This is Fe2+, plus. this is the tetra aqua dihydroxy complex, which is also neutral, and the nickel is the nickel tetra aqua dihydroxy complex. This is the precipitates, yeah? How could I prove them apart? Right, well, first thing I could do is if I do excess sodium hydroxide, excess NaOH to, to chromium 3 plus, it will redissolve. It will redissolve. Yeah, it goes, it's redissolve. And it does this because it goes to a full swap out with the OH minuses to form. See, that, I'm going to actually give you all of these as well. Why not? That forms CR brackets OH6, 3 minus. It redissolves, it has a charge, so it's soluble and it's a green solution. What I could then do is add excess sodium hydroxide excess sodium hydroxide to the Fe2 plus, and then on standing, on standing, it will turn brown. Turns brown because it's oxidizing to the Fe3 plus. And the brown one, if you're interested, the brown one is the FeH2O3 open, and it's the, it's the iron 3 tri triaqua trihydroxy complex, which is brown. And then the nickel, you can add excess sodium hydroxide all day long and it won't redissolve. Yeah, excess NaOH, no change, no change to nickel, two plus. Done. It's hard that, just knowing it. Right, on addition of excess ammonia, Chrome, we draw the diagram of three-dimensional shape of this complex. Line, dot, 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 wedge, wedge line and this is ammonia three-dimensional bloody hell uh do they want me to go the full whole hog eek it's gonna take me ages no way i don't like this that's not what they want guys they're just wanting you to show an h3 and if i if i will i will take the loss on that mark for the time i'd spend drawing out those bloody bonds i'll take that loss lol put it in a bracket it's interesting to see where they want the charge plus three yeah, but I think they want the three-dimensional shape around the chromium. Technically, they're not telling me. Yeah, I'll take that loss if I need to. State the bond angle uh, between the NH bond. It's tetrahedral now. So ammonia, we remember ammonia as being trigonal pyramidal. Bond angle there is 107.5, but we've now formed a dative covalent to the, to the chromium. What that means is it's become absolutely bog standard 109.5. 109.5. The other one was probably 107. Apologies, 107. Yeah. But so it's at the oh, I justify your answer. Uh, I'm going to say 109.5. Nitrogen has formed. Nitrogen has formed four covalent bonds. Covalent bonds. Uh, bonding pair, bonding pair, repulsion. Bonding pair. Bonding pair repulsion uh, means they go as far away as possible. They go as far apart as possible. Far apart as possible as possible uh, to minimize repulsion. Minimize repulsion. They love that. Minimize rep. Done. When EDTA is added to the complex, uh, the EDTA complex is favored. Explain why this is the, the chelate effect. Yeah, so first mark, chelate effect. Chelate effect. Second bullet point, increase in, increase in entropy. Increase in entropy. I'm even going to go the extra mile and show you why that is. Because the CR tetra, tet, this, this is the hexaamine hexaamine chromium 3 complex, which is purple, by the way. That's purple. Yeah, if I now add EDTA4 minus, everyone forgets the charge, by the way. You form CREDTA. I'll put that in a bracket, and then it's a square bracket, and it's going to be 1 minus, still soluble. But now I get 6 ammonias. 
So I've started off over here with two particles and now I've got seven. I'll actually write that down, increase in entropy, two particles to seven. To seven parts. Done, next. Okay. Sodium chromate. How come, I must be, this, this has been going on now a while. Let's check the time. One hour 25 and I think I've got a long way to go. I'm trying to do it in one go. How much is, oh no, I'm nearly at the end. I'm nearly at the end. Sodium, sodium chromate can, can, often contains impurities. A procedure to determine the percentage purity by mass of the sample of potassium chromate and sodium chromate involves. Conversion of chromate six ions to dichromate six ions in acidic conditions. Okay. Chromate six, by the way, is yellow, just so you know. You should you need to know all your colors. Chromate six is this guy. Ooh. Two minus. That's yellow. And we add acid. Yeah. And it, it turns into. So it's an equilibrium with the with the orange dichromate, Cr2072 minus. Yeah, if you balance that half clean, it explains the acidic condition as well. So you need two of those, and then you need water over there, and you need two H pluses over here. So if you add acid, it'll drive it that way. Using the dichromate ion acidic condition as an oxidizing agent to confirm iron to convert iron two to iron three. Okay. Oh, so they're going to use the iron three as a method for detecting the amount of chromate. Ha. Huh. Okay. That's weird. One point. Okay, maths games. It's all games, guys. One point five nigrams is, is sodium chromate sample is weighed out. The sample is transferred to a two hundred and fifty volumetric flask, and one hundred centimeters cubed of dilute sulfuric acid is added. The dichromate solution formed is made up to the mark with deionized water and thoroughly mixed. A buet is filled with a dichromate solution. Okay. So we've made the dichromate solution here, and then we've put it into a burette. Okay. Fine. 25 centimeters cubed of that solution of ammonium ion tooth is propetted into a flask. Okay. The sulfuric acid and fire is now added to the conical flask for drops of diphenyl amine indicator. The dichromate solution is added from the burette into the conical flask and swirled until the intense blue-violet color forms. The titration was repeated until concordant results. Write a balanced equation for the conversion of chromate ions into dichromate in acidic conditions to show that the ratio is a 2 to 1 molar. Oh, I've just done that one. That's nice. 2H plus his plus CrO42 minus goes to Cr2072 minus plus water. And the ratio is a 2 to 1. I like that. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, I'm going to put an equilibrium sign there just so I don't trust them. Next, calculate the percentage purity by mass of the sodium chromate and the mean titer is 10.8. The reaction is shown here. Okay, that's horrible. Okay, so how mean? It's on the next page as well. So that's impure. It's the iron, iron to ammonium thing that we need to use first, isn't it? Right, that much of the solution is put into the conical flask. Let's work out the moles of iron two. Yes. Yep. So stage number one, moles of iron two of Fe2 plus is going to be C naught point, this is awkward, I'll write the equation down as well. Number of moles is C times V over a thousand because I'm in centimeters cubed. 0 0.049 something, something, something. 492 times 25. 492 times by 25 centimeters cubed all over a thousand. So this is just going to be the moles of iron. Yeah, so 0 0.0, I'll get it wrong. 0 0.0492 times 25 all over a thousand. S to D. So I get 1.23 times 10 to the minus three moles of iron to ammonium sulfate, whatever it is. But there's only one iron in it, so it counts the same as the iron. Yeah, that's the moles of iron. Now what? So that moles of iron, then we, so that there is here. 
1.23 times 10 to the minus 3, yeah, of iron 2. And that reacts in a 6 to 1 with the chromate iron, the dichromate ion. So I'm going to divide that by 6. Ooh. Stage number 2. Number 1, number 2. Stage number 2, it's a 6 to 1 ratio. So, because they just poured that straight in, didn't they? 25 centimeters of the iron two cells pipetted into the conical flask. Fine. Okay. Into a conical flask. So those moles of iron to the dichromate, 6 to 1. So 1 1.23 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 6. Because it's a 6 to 1, and that's the way I'm heading. So divide that by 6. Gives me 2.05 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is the moles of dichromate, the moles of the dichromate two minus one, in the mean titer of 10.8 centimeters cubed. Now, in reality, we're not after the dichromate, dichromate, we're after the chromate. What was the function of this first equation? We've just detected this 2.05 times 10 to the minus four in 10.5 centimeters cubed, is that what it was? 10.8, that would have been tricky, 10.8 centimeters cubed of that guy. Well, hang on a minute, times that by two to get it back to the chromate, because it's a one to two ratio. So double that, stage number three. Yeah, 2.05 times 10 to the minus four times by two. So times that by two, gives me S to D, gives me 4.01, nope, 4.1, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of chromate in the 10.1 centimeters cubed. Blimmin' Now, how much did they make it up to? They it was 10.8 from 250. They had 250. Well, so many steps. That was in 10.8 centimeters cubed. Well, they put the entire thing in 250. So if I had 250, if I divide that by 10.8, what's the multiplying factor? 250 divided by 10.8 equals 23.1. So it's a mul so we've got 23.1 times that much volume of the dike. So I'm going to multiply my value of 4.1 exponential minus 4 times 23.1. Holy moly. So that now, so four, this is number five, 4.1 times, I'm going to make this, I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? Times 23.1 gives me 0 0.09471 moles of the chromate in the 250. And what did I put in the 250? Holy moly. In the 250, I put one point, I put 1.59 grams. Well, the question is, how many grams do I have? Number six, number of moles is grams over rams. Well, I've got moles. I've got the rams of sodium chromate. So sodium chromate, which I'm going to have to work out. It's got two of them in front of them. Na2CrO4. Sodium, oh my goodness, this is horrible. Sodium is 23 plus 23 plus 1 chromium at 52.0 plus 4 oxygens at 16, 16, 16, 16. I'm about to lose a mark on my 162.0. You'd lose a mark if you forgot it. Bring that over there. Times that by 0 0.0, 0 0.9471. Oh, here's the big question, 0.09471. Am I going to get this right? And I get 15.3 grams, which is way too much. Oh, dear. I've stuffed it up somewhere. Where, the question is, where have I gone wrong? I am, I, they put in 1.59. I'm over by a factor of 10. What have I done? I think I might have typed something wrong on my calculator. I think that might be what I've done. I think I might have done the 10 to the minus 4 wrong. 4.1 exponential minus 4 times 23.1. There you see. I typed it in wrong. 
I typed it in wrong. I found it. It's because I recognize what the value That was clever, that, guys. So that's actually shift eng, eng, shift eng, shift eng. See, I'm out by a factor of 10. Right, there we go. That makes more sense. I'm going to get this right now. Multiply by 162, and I get an answer of 1.534 grams. And how much did they give me originally? 1.59. So actual over theoretical. Ooh. What do they want? Do they want the percentage purity or the percentage difference? What am I what am I calculating? Calculate the percentage purity. That divided by 159. Divide that by 159 times 100. Times 100. Don't forget your times 100. 96.5%. And I'm done. Last question of paper five. There are a number of different industrial catalysts which contain chromium. And one of these is chromium 2, chromite 3. Which is, a so which is a solid used in organic synthesis pathways. Suggest how the heterogeneous catalysts such as this speed up a reaction. Right, in red, number one, um, heterogeneous catalysts, hetero cats. I'm just showing it for my own help, only sake, save myself with the times. Purity, 96.5% pure. Purity is 96.5% pure. Hetero cats, who's answering my question. Thanks, Donna. Hetero cats have active sites. Have active sites. The reactants, reactants add, 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 adsorb, adsorb. Oh, adsorb. Yes. Adsorb to the surface to the active sites, to the active sites where bonds are now weakened or broke, weakened, stroke broken, uh, molecules recombine, molecules recombine to form products to form products and then desorb from the surface and then desorption, desorption, I believe. Adsorption, Ads reactions adsorb. I think it's adsorb. Um, I'm gonna lose a mark here. That's gonna really upset me. D and then desorption occurs of products. We're done. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. Holy moly. Right. Let's mark it. Let's mark it. I'm at the end. Right. I'm at the end. I need a mark scheme. Right. Okay. Here we go. Allow. Does it say allow diagrams? Allow the changes shown in diagrams. Nailed it. I'll take every single one of those marks. So curly arrows should go from the delocalized ring. The open-ended horseshoe should be pointing towards the tetrahedral carbon with the four bonds. Oh, I could be really mean for myself there, guys. I could be really mean and be like, I won't give with the NO attached. I'm taking it. I will make a note to Benet of that, though. Like, I shouldn't be nice to myself. I'm like, carbon with four bonds. I'll write that down next time. Next, curly arrow should start from the CC bond, CH bond. Tin and concentrated, do I need the brackets? H, allow HCl5 to chloric acid. The electron pair on the nitrogen atom overlap with the delocalized electrons interact, so the nitrogen atom is less able to accept a proton. Therefore, less available to accept a proton. The lone pair on the nitrogen is incorporated. Nitrogen atom is incorporated in the delocalized ring of benzene. I'll take it. Blue precipitate. A blue precipitate forms. I cheated on that one because I looked up the pH, didn't I? Cheated. 
I did lose my five degrees, sodium nitrite and HCl. There's my one mark, folks. I lost it. Five degrees. Got to have it under five degrees. Two hydrox, two, three, three hydroxy. Nice. There's my structure. Three hydroxyphenol. Nitrogen, nitrogen bond can't rotate. Restricted rotation. Optical isomer drawn correctly. Take it. Um, a metal which forms one or more ions with an incomplete D, more stable ions with it. Ignore reference to different oxidation state quantum levels. An element that can form stable ions with an incomplete D subshell, which can form one or more stable ions. Uh, 4S1. Oxides. Yes and yes. This one was horrible. Green precipitate dissolves on excess to form a green solution. Oh, do I need that detail? It will redissolve. Mm -hmm. Turn brown on stirs into air. Green precipitate doesn't redissolve. They even allow you to do the chromium, the, the ammonia one by the looks. Oh, but they've made a mistake. Chromium is not a green solution with excess ammonia, it's purple. Great job, Edexcel, you morons. Sorry, Edexcel, I shouldn't call you that. It's mean. You are idiots, though. Um, okay, I'm just going to write on here more detail. I, I, to, oh, actually, you know what? I, I wrote all these with their colors there. Stuff that. No way. I wrote these here. I'm having them. I'm having them. I'm having them. Definitely. Right, did they? No, this is a question. Did I need to show the ammonia? No, I didn't. I'll take it. And the charge was outside the box. Nice. Clever. 109.5. Four areas of bonding electron densels repel to maximize and minimize repulsion. Has four covalent bonds, bonding pair, bonding pair repulsion, for sure. That's definitely two marks for me. Minimize repulsion being there as well is a useful one. Chelate effect. Ligand exchange. Given an equation, which I did. Yeah. Allow. Particles increase moles from two to seven, increase in entropy. Yeah, entropy of the system increases. Okay, entropy increases, don't need the system, it's nice to add it. Right, here's the big one. Did I get, I got the equation right, but did I get the percentage purity? Okay, my number's not exactly theirs. I got 96.5, they get 96.69, they get seven. So the question is, how, what's the what's the allowed variable? Uh, I'm going to give it to myself and say I've got all my answers. I've round I've got a rounding error. Definitely, not that it matters. I think final answer without working is plus six. I hate that. It's disgusting. I'll give myself all the all the six, but uh, I've picked up a rounding error somewhere there. Allow T E at each stage. It's like ever carried forward or something. I don't know. I uh, might get this wrong. Adsorption. Oh, I've lost it. It's not. I'm so sorry. I will lose that. I'll take it off myself. It's adsorption. You've got to just gonna say active sites. I'll give myself. But I'm gonna take off my mark there. For it's not. It's adsorb. Adsorption. Yeah, bonds are weakened, desorption. I got the P correct in the second one. So stupid. Anyway, and that's the end of the paper. Right, year 13, I'm done. I hope I bring you back and stop showing my screen. Up to here. Hi right, guys, we're done. I hope you found it useful. It was a tough paper, that's been an hour and 43 minutes. That's been a long webinar. I'm so sorry it's been so long. Those papers are tough, guys. Um, I'm over technically in terms of my length of time. I wanted to be done an hour and 40 the length of the paper, but with my explanations, I think it just pushes me over. So guys, I will leave you be today. I hope you find it useful. I will see you all uh, tomorrow at midday for a nice short paper six. I'll see you later, everybody. Uh, Winkit, can you do me a favor? Can you put the timestamps on the chat? Or uh, on the comment? Comment? Cheers, dude. Hello, everybody. You're very welcome, darling.